Um, what I have found um, is a lot of information about um, that in the old days um, people were working with herbs and in the old, old days it were the women who were the healers. They worked with the herbs and they worked with, uh, they did the, the, the childbirth uh, thing and Somewhere in history, a man came in and turned it all around and made it a technical thing. That, that's way before. But um, there has been a movement of uh, creating uh, universities that are based on pharmaceutical uh, products and, and a way of thinking. And um, it's funny that the Homeopathic Association Institute of the American Homeopathic Institute was there before the American Medical Association because the homeopaths they had their thing in 1844 and uh, the other guys, the a AMAs, is um, 1847. AMA is American, American Medical, Medical Association and they specifically were, were gathering force to get homeopathy out of the way and that's fun because they still haven't succeeded yet <laughs> okay yeah but um the american medical association has played a big role in in uh, helping the pharmaceutical industry to to take shape and in 1910 there was the flexner committee that was funded by rockefeller and the the Rockefeller Foundation, the Carnegie Foundation, and um, Ford Foundation. And uh, they sent this Abraham Flexner to investigate medical uh, schools mm -hmm. in, throughout the America. And basically what happened is that this Abraham Flexner, everything that was not pharmaceutically based was out since then. And the next step was that Rockefeller had this uh, educational fund and from that he gave money to universities or to other places and the condition was people who took the money they had to get rid of anything natural and go over to this pharmaceutical model. So he actually bought out the educational institutions? Yeah, basically, yeah. Here I have the book by um, Dr The Drug Story by Morris Beale. That's a book from uh, 1994. Yeah, 49, sorry, I always mix up these numbers. In Dutch you say, say it the other way around. That's what's, what's making it difficult. Um, and here he says, um, he has a whole lot of universities, Alabama, Colorado, with, with the amounts next to it. Um, John Hopkins, Harvard, received um, 1,683,621 of this drug trust money. And the drug trust was a conglomerate of pharmaceutical industries in America. Now, and uh, Harvard got that, and Yale got 600,074 something. And Columbia University in New York City got 800,049,578. Hundred and when we go to Holland, two um, universities, are, universities are mentioned, those of Leiden and Utrecht, and they profited respectively uh, $29,806 and $34,435. And then here we have Norway and Lebanon and Iceland and Belgium and Puerto Rico. So it's all in the book and the money that um, Rockefeller had to, to manipulate with the universities the way he did that was started with his grandfather uh, Bill Rockefeller who in, well, which, which a time year was that? I have to look that up, but in, in 18 something he moved from Cleveland, for, from New York to Cleveland and started selling uh, Nujol. And Nujol was basically nothing else but crude oil. They had something, 
done something to it a little crude bit. Crude oil is in petroleum crude oil. Petro yeah, yeah. And they had put it in little bottles and there was this 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 um, caduceus on top of it. So the twisted snake. The twisted snake. And that's why they call it snake oil. Oh, so and it wasn't actually snake oil. It wasn't snake oil. It was crude oil. They had done something to it and from a barrel like this big they could take out I don't know how many little bottles and he told people this is good against your cancer. So that is a snake oil salesman. So yeah. crude oil actually has got a lot of parabens in. It's not, I mean, but petroleum oils are yeah. not necessarily good for the human body. And Absolutely. He not. sold this oil he saying that it was good. It was good against cancer it was, and then he changed this song because it didn't help. And then he said, well, it's good for something else. And so he just kept selling stuff and people kept believing it because people want to get better. And so if anybody says with a lot of conviction, this is it. And I remember as a kid in Indonesia, we had flit. And flit was a little yellow uh, tin with a pump on it. And that was the same stuff, but then you threw the air against the mosquitoes. Oh. So those were the two products that made his, the, the Rockefeller money, and then so that's where the Rockefeller money actually started. With that's that the, that's where it started, and um, what I have read somewhere, but I, I can't tell you where it was exactly right now, is that uh, yeah he caught the attention of the Rothschilds, and then that that that, that those two connected. So the Rothschilds actually caught onto the sort of a business opportunity and the mind behind it. Yeah. And obviously we're attracted to it and that's how the yeah. Rockefellers became sort of the American counterpart of the Rothschilds in Europe. Yes. Yeah. That's very interesting. Yeah. So it all links in through the pharmaceutical industry. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And, and uh, Roth, uh, Rockefeller 